What is the basic idea in your chapter, A Muslim's Burden, How Islam Fails the Individual? In every society, religion plays a very important role in equipping the individual with the proper values, the proper norms, the proper behavior, encouraging the proper behavior in them to, to live a harmonious life, to have, you know, you know, democracy and freedom does not come from the top to the bottom. It has to start at the bottom. The people have to have the proper value system to allow democracy and freedom to happen. And for instance, the Judeo-Christian culture has inf greatly influenced the Constitution of the United States. The people were in harmony with, with that Constitution. And they succeeded for many, many uh, decades in accomplishing an organized system, a system that succeeds in giving pr proper human rights for people the dignity of the human uh, spirit. But unfortunately, in Muslim countries, you can see how the individuals have failed to be equipped with the proper value system that will allow freedom and democracy to flourish. Why is that? Why is our Muslim societies so handicapped in allowing um, uh, the, the human freedoms and the human spirit to flourish and to achieve respect and dignity for human rights. And I'll tell you why. In Muslim societies, there are sheikhs, Muslim sheikhs, high-ranking high -ranking Muslim leaders who preach unbelievable things to the Muslim people. I'll give you an example. There is a sheikh by the name of Abu Ishaq al huwaini and he has a, a video on the internet preaching sexual slavery and slavery of people. And he blames the poverty of the Muslim world because they have abandoned jihad. And if Muslims go back to doing jihad, which she meant war, conquering other nations and taking their property and their women and children as slaves, and that would, would make Muslim people very rich. And he blames the lack of wealth in Muslim countries. He blames it on the lack of jihad which means going to war against non-Muslim countries. That sheikh is one of the stars on Arab TV and Egyptian TV. And this is what he is teaching his students. That jihad, violent jihad against non-Muslims is good. That slavery of non-Muslims is a virtue. And seizing their property is something good. And you can get rich this way. Is this the proper value system that a religion should teach their subjects? It is unbelievable. By Western standards, this is, uh, this is unthinkable. But in the Middle East, this is normal. This is education. Another... Uh, Another value system that Sharia teaches and Muslim, you know, sheikhs teach it everywhere. That exaggeration, lying and slander for the purpose of Islam is okay. And it's not okay, you're obliged to lie if it's for the purpose of uh, fulfilling an obligation as a Muslim. And when you give some Muslims this kind of value system, it is, it is not the kind of value system that will make them prosper and live in peace and harmony. Vengeance has been prescribed to you according to the Quran. Vengeance 
is a commandment in the holy books of Islam. That makes the average Muslim always looking behind him to the back and not forward to solve his problem. He is retaining all the problems of the past and want to do vengeance. And that's why they erupt in, in uh, violence uh, and vengeful uh, activities that, that can only hurt them in the long run. Redemption and forgiveness are not taught in Islam. Forgiveness of their enemies, loving your enemies, doesn't exist in Muslim scripture. For, for instance, another important concept, the act of insulting Muhammad under Sharia law is an act punishable by death. And any Muslim who hears a person cursing Muhammad or insulting Islam will be forgiven for killing an apostate. They are automatically an apostate and a Muslim will be forgiven for killing an apostate. Islam tells the Muslim on the street it's okay to do vigilante street justice under certain conditions. So a Muslim is burdened with venging Muhammad, with venging God himself on the streets. He becomes judge and executioner. That, is, that burdens the Muslim individual a lot. In Christianity, in Christianity, Jesus came down to save people. In Islam, it's a Muslim's duty to save Muhammad and to save God. And that's why he's given the right to kill for the sake of Allah. A Muslim must kill for the sake of Allah. In Christianity, God came down to save us. It's a totally different concept. How will the current situation in the Middle East affect Israel? Yeah, the situation now is very unstable in Syria, even in Jordan, uh, in Egypt, it's uh, in Lebanon. So all around Israel, the situation is very unstable. There's going to be civil war. There's civil war in Syria. It might even get worse in Egypt. In Jordan, it's very uh, unpredictable. And something usually happens when Arabs have internal problems, civil wars. To stop the civil war, the easiest thing they, they can do quickly is to shoot at Israel. And when they shoot at Israel, Israel shoots back. And that's when they unify again. And this is the problem that Israel might face today with all of the un civil unrest around it, surrounding it. Um, there is also a deep problem in Islam when it comes to the Jewish people. And I wrote in my chapter on Israel an explanation why, why the existence of the Jews is such an existential threat to Muslims, to Islam itself to the credibility of Islam. Why? It goes back to the seventh century. In the seventh century, the Prophet Muhammad on his deathbed, he commanded his followers, Muslims, to go after the Jews and kill them wherever you find them. This is the, this is the commandment of the Prophet of Islam at his deathbed to his followers. Why did he do that? Why was he so threatened by the, by the Jewish people that he didn't, didn't he, that he neglected to entrust his people with something holy instead of entrusting them to kill Jews? And this is the reason. Muhammad, his main purpose was to was to convert the Jews to make them Muslims. When the Jews, Jewish people, the Jewish tribes, refused to convert to Islam, Muhammad's credibility was totally threatened when the Jewish people refused to convert to Islam. He felt that the people of the book, who are the Jews, 
should accept him as their Messiah. And when they did not, he felt threatened. His, his own people told him, even that the people of the book don't believe in you. And that's when Muhammad killed 800 Jewish men from one tribe, beheaded them. And he took their wives as sexual slaves and, his chil and their children. That act by itself, by a prophet of God, was an unholy act. And it came a point in the ministry of Muhammad to either face it, either I am a murderer of the Jewish people or they are not human. They deserve to be killed. They are apes, pigs, and enemies of Allah. And that's what Muhammad decided, that not only will he kill the Jews wherever he finds them, but his followers forever, till the day of resurrection, will kill Jews wherever he finds them. Judaism and the Jewish people are an existential threat by their mere existence to Islam, <laughs> and to Muhammad himself, and that's why his followers until today cannot make true peace with the Jewish people. Unfortunately, it's an existential threat for Islam.